This presentation is sponsored by Utah Independent Living Center, and it is the history of the disability movement. So during the 1960s, the United States is growing through great changes. And women, African Americans, and other minority groups are fighting for their rights. And they're successful. And one of those successes is the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And the law says that it is illegal to discriminate against people because of their race, their religion, and later their gender. And gender meant whether they're a man or a woman. But disabilities are not mentioned in the Civil Rights Act. So people with disabilities begin their own civil rights movement in a large part similar to the civil rights movement. Um, and the Civil Rights Act was passed in, again, 1964. But the ADA, or the Americans with Disabilities Act, was not passed for 26 more years. That's really a long time. So what year does that make it? What year did the ADA pass? So people with disabilities began to organize in the early 70s. And what does that organization look like? Well, they talk to their representatives. They wrote hundreds of thousands of letters and articles for papers and magazines. They tried to meet with the policymakers at the time. In the picture that you see, you see Justin Dart and Judy Human, and they were pioneers in the disability rights movement. And Justin Dart was present at the ADA signing in 1990. In 1972, Nixon vetoed the Rehabilitation Act, claiming it would be fiscally irresponsible. And that forced people with disabilities to use more extreme actions to have their concerns heard. So civil disobedience is the refusal to obey laws or rules that are thought to be unfair. It's called nonviolent resistance because violence is never used when engaging in civil disobedience. So what began on April 5th, 1977 was people with disabilities and their community occupying federal buildings in the United States in order to push through Section 504. Section 504 states that people with disabilities should not be excluded from activities, denied the right to receive benefits, or be discriminated against from any program that uses federal financial assistance solely because of this, their disability. And prior to the ADA, which passed in 1990, this act was the most important disability rights legislation. And the most successful of the 504 sit-ins was in San Francisco, where the federal building was occupied for nearly a month. The government staff at the federal building refused to assist the protesters in any way. Other minority groups, such as Black Panthers, the Butterfly Brigade, and even an anti-gay violence group supported the disability rights movement and brought in food along with other materials to assist the protesters. And in the picture on the left, you see somebody sleeping on a mattress that was brought in by those supporting groups. There are many other examples of civil disobedience that have been used in the human rights movements around the world. Leaders like Mahatma Gandhi 
Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King have organized peaceful marches, protests, and sit-ins to fight for human rights. A very famous example of civil disobedience was in 1955 when Rosa Parks, seen here in the picture in the right-hand corner, refused to sit in the seats at the back of the bus and her quiet refusal to move to the back of the bus began the Montgomery bus boycott and helped Martin Luther King begin the civil rights movement. So one of the things that the disability rights movement fight, fought for was transportation and accessibility to buildings. So, um, it's often said that while African Americans were fighting for the right to sit in the front of the bus, people were with disabilities were fighting for the right just to get on the bus. Without lifts or ramps, many people with disabilities were forced to live, shop, and um, see doctors all in whatever area they could access in their chair. In 1983, a group of activists in Colorado formed the Americans, American Disabled for Public Transportation, or ADAPT. 